Hey guys, do you want to see a movie that features Mormons murdering a family and shooting a pregnant woman? <laughs> you had me at shooting a pregnant woman. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> If you do, then according to IMDb, Messenger of Death from 1988 is for you. Ah, Messenger of Death from 1988 is the movie that we reviewed for this episode of Loose Cannon. My name is Brian Lee in Elk Grove Village is... Bran Bran. And uh, Evanston is... Christopher Lee. Uh, Bran Bran, what are you drinking? I am drinking Jim Beam Honey. Very sweet. Not super whiskey bite, but... Pretty sweet. So if you don't like sweet, why not like this? Yeah. Christopher? Uh, I have two tiny glasses. Uh, in the in this one, I have actual espresso, hence the espresso stain. And then in this equally small glass, I have, um, uh, was it Four Roses? I got my aviation gin. Fuck you, Bran Bran. Oh, is that the God. Ryan Reynolds one? or That is that. Yeah. That's the one that he makes himself. <laughs> With ah. his own hands. Yep. He just takes the elderberry or whatever the hell it is. Yep. He's just like, <laughs> mm-hmm. Bran Bran, do you uh, recommend Messenger of Death? I do. I liked it. It reminded me of like the movie that we used to watch as a kid, like on like basic TV and like on Saturday afternoons. Like antenna TV, you mean? Like when you say basic exactly. TV. Exactly. Yeah, okay. yeah. Ears. WPWR. Uh, Brian, Christopher, do you recommend yes. uh, Messenger of Death? <laughs> I do not. Yeah. Uh, actually, I, I agree with that. Uh, I do not oh, wow. recommend this. I'm a little surprised, but not much. You guys don't like me. You guys don't like many things. Uh, for people who have not seen Messenger of Death from 1988, uh, I don't know if we've said it yet, but stars Charles Bronson. Uh, a Denver reporter investigates the mass murder of a family of Mormons in rural Colorado. Rural Colorado. Um, over three minutes of credits to start out. So yes. to me, I was not happy when it first started because it was taking a long time. Brian, why don't you recommend this? He doesn't kick ass. True. A lot of, so after I watched this, I read a lot of reviews from, you know, Amazon and IMDb, et cetera. And a lot of people were like, yeah, this is, you know, Charles Bronson's a more serious role. <laughs> I was like, okay. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he just, just like, you he know, doesn't shoot anyone. He just punches everyone. <laughs> right. But he doesn't even do that that much. Like until the end. Uh, that I actually didn't mind. Cause he is, I don't know if I actually, yeah, he was 67 in this movie. No excuses. <laughs> <laughs> um, but to me, it, it's the ending was kind of a letdown. The ending was weird. Yeah, yeah. I, I yeah, it kind of just like ended. There was really no like type closure, of anything. right? Yeah, there no closure or anything. Yeah, I mean, so, um, it's kind of obvious. But for viewers, like spoiler alert for this movie that came out like over thirty years ago. Yeah, because um, yeah, at the end, the whole basically like the ending kind of ruined it for me. Cause like, I was kind of like on the fence, whether I liked it or not, like while watching the movie, but then like the end, it kind of lost me. And just because like, I feel like the whole time they're trying to set up that couple that like owns the water company. Like they're kind of like, like, Oh, they did it. Uh And then kind of like, there's like a five, 10 minute chunk at the end where it's like, Oh, maybe it's the chief of police, new mayor. Maybe he's doing something weird. And then at the very end, it, wasn't any of them. It's just like uh, that Fox guy. So. Yeah. What, I what, thought him. What was I, was like, I was thinking him the whole time. Uh, really? Yeah. <laughs> you remember when he was like looking at like at the, kind of at the end, he kept staring at the white, like, uh, that woman that owned the water company. And like, he, can't, he just always seemed like he was always in the middle of something. I, I thought mm-hmm. it was him and the woman actually. And I thought, cause that one guy gave her the company, the husband. So I didn't think he was a part of it. I thought it was the woman and I thought it was that dude that were in on it. So the woman not being in on it actually surprised me. I thought it was the woman. And then during the like dinner scene where basically like Charles Bronson like invites them to dinner to basically like ask them point blank if they're like, you know, doing it. Yeah. Yeah, She, the wife seemed innocent enough. And the guy was like, Oh, let's, let's go. Let's not talk about this. So I was like, Oh, he did it. Uh, Yeah. But it wasn't any of them. It was a guy who used to have a shale company. Like did either of you guys get that? I don't know. Explanation. I don't know what he does or who he, like what he, he would to me, I think he was just one of the the business men, you know, really that just knew everybody type thing. Yeah, well, yeah, definitely that. But yeah, I feel like they try to explain it like he used to own a shale company or something, and then he well, sold it's a shale company. 
Is that like type of rock or something? It's for oil. Shale, oh. shale's rock. And in between the shale, shale's very like, th- from my understanding, it's a very thin rock. And in between the shale is oil. So you, I guess you need water to get that oil out of that rock. I don't know. Yeah, how and, they, yeah and they said that where the, sh- I think the shale guy sold his company to the water people. But at the very end, the, the guy, the water couple, they're like, oh, we offered you to like buy stocks and you didn't do it. And yeah, I was like, I, wait, what? <laughs> yeah. I'm right there with you. The plot kind of like I'm getting really tired just <laughs> hearing all of this. Uh, yeah, yeah. It, it, like, it's, you know, and I don't recommend it like for like the in-depth plot, but I like I liked it because I re- wasn't really sure, you know, who did it. You right. Know, I, I liked Bronson. I like that he um he does no nonsense, just how he is, you know, just straightforward. Right. Did you kill these people? Yeah, like, right. like, yeah. I'm like, hell yeah, ask these questions. You're a hard hitting yeah. reporter. You know? Right. So, but <laughs> right. I like that stuff and they, it kept my attention, you know. Like I said, until about the end when it the plot was starting to fall apart a bit. So even like some of the assassin stuff coming in a bit, I was like, ooh, assassins. So yeah, <laughs> and I will say that is that the story up until the end, I, I did find pretty interesting. Why would you name your child Zenus? Like you're just asking to be made fun of as a child. Well, I mean, they probably lived like in the Mormon community. So maybe Zenus was like <laughs> the like, probably homeschooled hip Mormon name. Oh, that's true. <laughs> that's true. Yeah. Hip. <laughs> yeah. I can appreciate like, the two guys coming in there and like, like, you know, like shooting up the joint and then like murdering all the kids. Uh, I don't mean I appreciate it. <laughs> no, no, yeah, I like where you're going with this. I like where you're going, yeah. <laughs> but I mean, they just fucking shot the fuck out of everyone. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But but it, what was funny is I think it's when the cops show up and like these people's like guts are all blown out. They're like, looks like a 12 gauge shotgun. And it's like, what else would it fucking be? A fucking flamethrower? Like, right. yeah, yeah. it's going to be a good fucking shotgun. That kind of like, there's there's a nice little shock value in there, which I could kind of, you know, appreciate. Um, but when the one guy, I forget what his name was, but like the, it's his family that got murdered and he shows up and he sees all the, all the cops. He's like, Oh, the children, the children, you all, Oh no, no, not the children. Oh, not the children. Oh God. No, not the children. I have a down in caps, not the children. <laughs> the uh, wives. That's fine. The children. Yeah. No. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I liked that sheriff, not, not the, the Denver sheriff, that like smaller town sheriff when, um, Oh, uh, Bron- uh, yeah. He's the a, one that Brunson flies to. Right. To and meet he, the other half of the he's family. Like, yeah. The Denver, they told me to meet you here. Mm. And he like, starts off super friendly <clears throat> and very like articulate. And then by the end of that, like five minute conversation, he just was like, well, well yeah. And he walks away. Like it turned, it was just a very awkward like yeah, it, uh, exchange between those two. Yeah, because he said something that's like, oh, I'd promise so and so that I'd meet you here and I met you. <laughs> Goodbye. <Yeah. laughs> right. well, that's exactly how it went. It sounded so friendly, like they were going to like maybe like go to the police station. And then all of a sudden, he's like, oh, bye. Bye. And he was like, what? What I, What happened? And you never see him again. That was it. That was just done. Yeah. Uh, did you guys spot the old school uh, Taco Bell logo? I wrote yes. it down. Taco Dude. Bell. Dude. Yeah. I wanted to get a fucking chili cheese burrito and fucking <laughs> shit my brains out. and Spicy chicken burritos. Those are the best. They don't make them anymore. <laughs> the spitch boos. What? 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 <laughs> Spicy chicken burrito. Spitch boo. I see. That sounds yeah. vaguely racist. <laughs> but super tasty. <laughs> Cheesy Gordita Crunch, man. That's where it's at. Yeah. The, did, you, did you try the double? Cheesy Gordita Crunch when they made it? No. And I still Ooh. haven't done the White Castle with everything like you keep on telling us to do. The one thing that was kind of kind of cool was where the... Uh, or wait, or was it the later one? Because there's a couple... Oh, no, I'm sorry. That's later. The, with the whole Colorado Water Company. Because, like, there's yeah. the one, the first, you know, scene where, like, yeah, ah, they're being followed. But then there's the next scene where it's three semis yes. mm-hmm. that are fucking up the Bronco. And it's, like, they're, like, you know, like, essentially, you know... Sandwiching. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Thank, thank you, Brad, Brad. Um, Yeah, and it's, like... I feel like that, that car would get more fucked up, though. Oh, yeah. Yeah, uh, it would have been destroyed. Well, I mean, they said like, oh, we need to make it look like an accident, which I mean, that's debatable. Right. But I mean, yeah, I think that's why they didn't like just like completely just straight up smash it, though. It does flip over. They crash into it and explodes instantly. So whose funeral 
did Charles Bronson show up to that was like in the middle of the field? Or whose yeah. funeral was it supposed to be? It was not it, Zenus, but Zenus's brother. Like, oh, no, the one who had the heart attack, right? Or no? Yeah, yeah, it was the one who had the heart attack, which is, was like the father of everyone. Yeah, that, that was Zenus's brother. That was Zenus's brother. No, so oh god, they all have stupid names. They're Zenus. So when he goes to yeah. the funeral, though, and he yeah. wants to prove a point that there's no one in the casket. <laughs> Baller move. <laughs> <laughs> right. I mean, what happens if someone was in the casket, though? Yeah. I mean, like. Well, and that's the thing, because, yeah, he asks whoever. He's like, oh, we're all the men. They don't answer. And, yeah, the first thing he apparently thinks of is like, oh, well, it must be a fake funeral. So I'm going to shoot the casket. Right. Like, mm. my first thought was like, oh, maybe the men are like you know, on patrol or defending or like my first guess wasn't that it was a faked funeral, but yes, going back like 10 minutes. Yeah. The, the scene with the three semis was like a pretty cool action piece. No CG, all practical. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. That was neat. Yeah. Uh, you can tell you, I mean, so you said Bronson's 67 in this. Yes. So you can, I mean, you can definitely tell he's getting a little long in the tooth. Cause when he, uh, so they're at that dinner party and he wants to talk to, uh, the guy who was behind it all, but he doesn't know it at that point. He's like, he's like, oh, I'll meet you in the study. And he goes up there and one of the killers meets him up there. And I forget how it all plays out, but like Tra- Charles Bronson does like this thing where like, like kind of rolls on his back and like kicks him up like this weird, like bizarre donkey kick thing. And the guy's like, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, that's not acrobatic at all. <laughs> and it's weird because you get the sense there isn't like in this movie, I get it. He's like supposed to be a reporter. So I guess he wouldn't have those skills, but like death wish three was only a couple years prior. And he's he was an architect. kicking ass. Dude. Yeah. And he was kicking ass there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It would have been cool to see him like kick more ass, but I was, I, I liked him as like a uh, reporter being like super yeah. snarky. It was so, yeah, it was like a weird middle ground though. Just cause like he's a reporter, but like, he still like took out an assassin, like no problem twice actually in this movie. So it's like, everyone yeah, knows him. Rep- so I guess he's popular or something. I, I don't know. <laughs> he's a reporter, but you can still like hand to hand combat. No problem. Was the blonde woman, his partner or his wife or no idea. Yep. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> <a Mormon. laughs> And marry our cousins. <laughs> Where we can worship freely, govern justly, and grow vast fields of hemp for making rope and blankets. Yes, and marry our cousins. The assassin at the end, he beat him. Uh, and then it kind of, he was like, the assassin was like, yeah, it was this guy that told me to do it. And he's like, oh, I didn't say anything. <clears throat> and then he's pointing the gun at the assassin for like five minutes. Right. Going standing around and he shoots himself. <laughs> Which yeah. was very unexpected. Yeah I, yeah, I didn't. I wasn't expecting that. I thought Branson was going to kick the gun out of his hand and then give him a judo chop on the neck. That would have been awesome. <laughs> He's not Austin Power. Oh, there's a fucking reference for you. He's <laughs> <laughs> he could judo. He could. Maybe he was the founder of judo chops. And you're just, who? Austin Powers? No. Charles oh. Bronson. Yes. Oh. Did you ever? Did you ever have any friends that like? <laughs> Stop like, right there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> like maybe like five years after Austin Powers came out and they'd be like, yeah, baby. Oh. And I'm like, Ugh. I, I like still, people, who, people who still like do Borat impressions. It's just like, <laughs> good cake. My wife made it. My wife. <laughs> <laughs> Borat. I, can, I don't know if it's exactly a freeze frame, but the movie ends with like Bronson just like staring at the camera. Like, <laughs> yeah, he kind of turns around. He's like, <laughs> yeah, I'm expecting like a thumbs up or a big smile or something. Why but would no. you do that? <laughs> I don't know. Like, face <laughs> song. Well, that at least would have been like an ending. Instead, he just kind of looked and is like, is there more movie? And then it turns out. <laughs> <laughs> a question mark just appears above his head. Credits. Oh, right. Yeah. The big thing I didn't like is it kind of, there's no conclusion, there's no closure, it just ends. And I, yeah, it was like, I didn't, yeah, I wish there was whole, something more concrete. That big confrontation between water company, shale company, Charles Bronson, mayor, whatever, that all happens at a dinner party in front of like a whole bunch of guests. <laughs> right. They so were doling like, out tons of money. Yeah. You know, those fucking motherfuckers are like trying to sneak like hors d'oeuvres, like into their purses, like, oh, oh yeah. that's going on. 
Yeah, they, she, the women probably line their purses, you know, with the plastic wrap and putting like the meat and the rolls in there. Yeah. Oh, That's what my, my friend's grandma used to, she would take the salt and pepper shakers and the crafts, like Denny's, if she got bad service and she put them in her purse, like <laughs> next time they don't give me better service, I'll take more salt or whatever. Yeah, she was crazy. <laughs> Uh, salt. No, you don't open, up, you'd open up cabinets in her house. <laughs> There'd be like, like fifty salt and pepper shakers from like Denny's in there. I'm not joking. Why would you need more than one salt and pepper shaker? I, I can ask her. I think she's still alive. Oh, <laughs> oh, it took a dark turn there. <laughs> she died from a sodium <laughs> overdose. Yeah, <laughs> plot twist. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. One thing I'll add is at thirty nine fifteen. Uh, one of the characters just starts. It really seems like seems like he just starts shouting all the French words that he knows. No, please. We don't. Why don't good, we good, 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 good. A table to le monde. Big feet, mes enfants. Let's eat. Just like Rembrandt. Yeah. Do you oh. still recommend a uh, messenger of death? Yeah, I do. Yeah. I, even with the ending, you're not going to be away, come away satisfied with the ending, but like I said, it's more of a nostalgic thing. I, I enjoyed it. It kept my attention through all of it until the end. So I was, I, you know, I, I wouldn't mind watching this again, you know, on a, like a lazy Sunday or something. Mm. Brian, do you still not recommend messenger of death? I still not recommend. Yeah. Uh, I still don't recommend I think the big thing for me is that I, I would basically recommend any of the Death Wish movies over this one. More this, kicking ass. This one is more family friendly. If you show <laughs> a child, well, Charles Charles Bronson, Bronson. kids get blasted. <laughs> I'm not. I don't like. like I, I, this to me is in a whole different type of like movie category. I wouldn't yeah. even compare, you know. So it's like I can enjoy Nothing Death Wish, but then I can enjoy this best. one too. I just, I just say that this one's more family friendly, just because I feel like every Death Wish movie has like. <laughs> at least three rape scenes in it. So That's it's like, yeah, well, they didn't have that. <laughs> and the, the kids would enjoy it because like there's children. Uh... Cause everyone gets murdered. Right, exactly. <laughs> Cause like, oh, someone like me died too. <laughs> how, uh, how's everyone's drinks? Do you recommend the drinks that you've had? I still recommend gin. Fuck you, Bram Bram. <laughs> ah, gross. So if you can get past the sweet, the um, booze starts kicking in and then you really don't care about the sweet anymore. So, there you go. Do you think that would be better as a like mixer almost? Yes. That would be good yeah. with a hot toddy. Ooh, yes. 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 Completely agree. Yeah, any kind of like boozy drink that you don't mind being sweet. That, yeah. This would go perfect with this because even the whiskey part of it, there's no burn. You could, there's really nothing. All you're getting is the effect of the whiskey. But you don't get that like, <clears throat> like in your throat. I'm just happy that you found a whiskey to go along with your love of that Jessica Alba movie. Jessica Alba movie. Honey. Honey. <laughs> <laughs> Who is she? From Universal Pictures comes a story about reaching out. Christopher, did you say if you recommend this still or not? Uh, I do not recommend it. I'd recommend uh, any other Death Wish oh, first. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's right, that's right. That'll do it for this episode. Boom. Boom. <laughs> Boom. Hey, Brian here. Thanks for checking out Nick Uncage and uh, Loose Cannon. Uh, best way you can help other people find out about us is like, comment, share, and subscribe to the podcast.